A woman with a motive. After five months of dead ends, the investigation into the murder of Annalisa Ramundo was heating up. Police were learning that Sheila Davalu had been obsessed with Annalisa's boyfriend, Nelson Sessler. She had talked about him all the time, and they believed she wasn't just talking, she was stalking, spying on Nelson and Annalisa. Even her husband, Paul, knew about it. Well, sort of. To me, it was portrayed like, we're, I'm helping my friend spy on a cheating boyfriend. And I'm like, yeah, sounds fine. Go ahead, do it. I mean, and I even had these, these night vision binoculars that I had from, like, high school. I'm like, yeah, take these. You can see actually in the dark pretty well. So if Sheila was spying on Annalisa by night, the next question was, where was she on the day of the murder? Police contacted Purdue Pharma. Sheila had checked out of the office that very morning. Next, they got a search warrant for Sheila's apartment. We'd recovered packaging and receipts for two stun guns. Two stun guns. She had uh, a lockpick set, and she had night vision goggles. And recording devices. Police now had a theory. Sheila Davalu was so obsessed with Nelson Sessler that she stalked his girlfriend and went to her home to kill her. She may not have even needed the lockpick set, and Elisa would probably have opened the door for her. This was not a spontaneous crime. This took a, a tremendous amount of planning. Five years after Annalisa's death, Sheila Davalu was arrested and charged with her murder. It's like one of these lifetime movies where you hear about this kind of stuff and it's just, it's hard to, so hard to believe it. And Sheila would say it's hard to believe because she was being railroaded. The evidence was flimsy. There were other suspects and the case was purely circumstantial. Ready to go? Uh, yes, we are, Your Honor. And when she finally went on trial this past February, Sheila Davalu was fully prepared to take charge. She decided to represent herself. She's so arrogant that she thinks she can actually do better than her own lawyer. But she did sound the part. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen of the jury. If I can approach the witness, Your Honor. Objection, Your Honor. Here, sir. She was polite, professional. No further questions, Your Honor. And so steady. This educated, friendly, mild-mannered woman was the same one who viciously stabbed Annalisa Ramundo to death? Exactly, according to the prosecutor and police. She planned the killing, she carried it out, she covered it up. Nelson Sessler, the one-time suspect, was now introduced to the jury as just another victim of Sheila's lies and manipulation. At any time prior to March 23 of 2003, did she ever tell you she was married? Uh, no. no. All right. She never did. And the low-key demeanor that police had once found so suspicious, now it seemed that's just how he is. He's very laid back. He's too laid back. People might misinterpret that for being not emotional or not caring, but I think he does care, and he did care. He just didn't notice, according to the prosecution, that Sheila Davalu's feelings were so intense. He even seemed clueless when in the summer before Annalisa was killed, Sheila suddenly showed up on his flight from Las Vegas. As I was waiting there, I looked up to see Sheila Davalu walk up to me. At the airport? At the airport. There she was, and she was on the same flight as me, coming back to... Where was she sitting on this flight? She sat next to me. Was this a complete surprise to you? It was a complete surprise to me. But Sheila's friend Tammy May knew this was no coincidence. Sheila had told her stories about hacking into Sessler's voicemail. She knew exactly where he was going to be. And she pretended as if it was destiny or fate. She was so manipulative, the prosecutor suggested that once she killed Annalisa, she used Nelson's grief to seduce him again. Sheila was one of the few people uh, that I knew in Stanford that actually, you know, was willing to talk about it. Most people sort of shunned me. You know, I didn't really have a whole lot of friends here to talk about it. But the prosecutor had to show the jury that not only was Sheila Davalu obsessed with Nelson Sessler, she was willing to kill someone to have him to herself. State calls to the witness stand Paul Christos. And that's why the testimony of Paul Christos was so important. It's so surreal that when I look back, it's, it's, um, I can almost look at it in the third person. The prosecutor argued that when Sheila Davalu rekindled her affair with Nelson, her husband Paul was now in the way. She staged the game. She stabbed him, 
and then agreed to drive him to the hospital, albeit slowly, because she hoped he would bleed to death on the way. Paul told the jury how he begged her to hurry. Just go, it's taking too long, I can't believe how long this is taking. When they finally arrived and he was still alive, the prosecutor argued her deadly intention became clear. Time was up for Paul. She came in through the driver's side rear door, and then at that moment she um, lunged at me. Lunged? Yeah, and stabbed me in the, in the chest. And now you're really bleeding. Yeah, this one had a lot of blood. This time, she nicked his heart. What are you doing? Oh my God, you know, you're trying to kill me. And remember that call she made to Nelson after she first stabbed Paul? She was inviting Nelson to dinner for that very night. Paul, who is now divorced from Sheila, finds the whole thing unbelievable. She had her nails done that morning. She spoke to her friends that morning. She's not like taking the morning off or anything. She's doing her normal things. And then... Figure she'll get rid of her husband and... Like she had a list. Get a nails list, done, get rid of my talk husband. to friends, kill yeah. my husband. And make sure Nelson gets here by 8.30 so we can have dinner. So now, if the jury was wondering if Sheila Davalu would actually do this, the prosecution's answer was yes, because she did this. And where there was motive, the prosecutor argued, there was opportunity. The jury heard how Sheila checked out of her office the morning of Annalise's murder. She had no alibi. And remember that mysterious 911 call that came in minutes after the murder? I think the guy is, is it my neighbor. Police believe the caller was Sheila Davalu herself. The prosecutor said voice recognition software showed it was indeed the defendant. That call was intended, obviously, as a matter of common sense, to throw the police off her trail. The prosecution had a suspicious 911 call, no alibi, and a killer motive. But was that enough to put Sheila Davalu away?